Let's pray. Father, thank you so much. This opportunity to continue sharing Isaiah with your family. Once again, Father, thank you for Isaiah. Thank you for his dedication and for saying, here I am, send me. Thank you. Father, once again, be with those that are traveling, those that are ill, just counted eight that I know of that are ill. Some nursing a baby, some traveling. Father, wherever they are, wherever your family is, I know you're with them. I know you care for them and love them. For that we are grateful. Thank you so much. In Jesus' name we pray. And the people said, Amen. Amen. So we're going to continue talking about Isaiah. And like I said, I want to just, I just thank you, Isaiah. And for those that were, that were here last week, sorry, it's going to be a little review. But we're going to look, I'll, I'll get with it, I promise, kind of. But the, the name Isaiah, just in the very name of Isaiah, is Yahweh is salvation, or the Lord saves. That's what his name means. So if you take just the name of, is, of Isaiah, and if you've read Isaiah, or been in church long enough, you understand where most of the prophecies of the birth and the death of, the, of our Lord come from, it's in Isaiah. And last week we talked about how the book of Isaiah is a Bible within a Bible. The Bible has 66 books. Isaiah has 66 chapters. The first 39 books of the Bible are the Old Testament. And it talks about warnings and, and some comforts, but mostly warnings about straightening up, get right, judgment is coming. And then the last 27 books, the New Testament, we get our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And the word, the words change. If you've ever looked at a concordance, which I encourage you to do that, Look up certain words, like love, like repentance. You're going to see a few in the Old Testament, but in the Old Testament you're going to find many instances where the word love comes in, and baptism, and repentance. It tells you, it gives you the context that the New Testament is about the love of God, the comfort of God. And how we, of those walking in darkness, seeing that great light, get to enter in the kingdom of God. So, we should give, once again, we should give Isaiah a huge thank you. Let's move on. So what is Isaiah trying to tell us? Like I said, he's trying to tell us that, <clears throat> how to be. And this is something that I don't think I talked about, maybe I did last week, how the difference, there is no difference between Isaiah and us. Okay, yeah, 2,700 years. But to God, that's a day, I mean, honestly. But Isaiah was preaching, prophesying, and trying to warn these people in a time where Israel is in a good state. They're up here. They're not being attacked. They're not being hell ran off into exile there's no famines there's, there's under a good kings and they're up here and here comes Isaiah do good standing no problems people like him and he starts talking about judgment's coming doom is coming and they're all like yeah what are you talking about there's a camel in every stable, there's sheep, there's chicken in every pot. What's your problem? I got no issues. I brought that up last week. Like, look around. We ain't got no issues. Oh, okay, there's a few. We don't like some things. But, yeah, the, the stock market, ah, but we're doing good. Why should we change? And my pet peeve, it's all good. I don't, I don't like that term. <laughs> Look around. When people start saying, you need to change what you're doing, judgment is coming, the world is going, what are you talking about? And when I'm talking about world, I'm talking about our world. 
That's all I can talk about is the world around us. I'm not talking about in Europe or anywhere else. I'm talking about the good old U.S. of A. Skagit County. Why would we need to change? I, there's a car in here. There's two cars, 2.3 children, a dog and a cat. What do we got a problem with? There's no issues. I'm good. I give to the poor. I do all of these things. I don't have a problem. Do you have a relationship with Jesus Christ? Ah, that's that church thing. I got burned by church years ago. I don't want to go back to that. Huh. And you kind of, we get kind of labeled for being one of those. If you do bring up judgment, and you do bring up, yeah, but the word says that if you don't have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, uh-huh, but yeah, but I got two cars, I got 2.3 children, my house is worth $600 billion, I don't have an issue, it's all good. All the way through Isaiah, we read, and he's giving us snippets. Through the, like I said, through the first 39 chapters, he's giving us snippets of judgment coming. But he also gives snippets of pieces coming. In chapters 7 and 9 is where one of the, two of the best prophecies of the birth of Christ coming. In chapter 7, it tells us that we're going, the virgin is going to have, uh, be with child, and we will call him Emmanuel. God is with us. Verse chapter 9, he tells us that those walking in darkness have seen a great light. If you're Gentile like I am, that's how we got to, got to the fold. But there, something I didn't get to last week, which is where we're going to start, is chapter 14 of Isaiah. It's one of the only places in the Old Testament where you're going to see a glimpse of something that's not Christmas at all. But it's a warning. And it's a warning by Isaiah that we need to be looking at and we need to be doing just the same thing. Turn to chapter 14 of Isaiah with me. <coughs> Excuse me, verse 12. I would be remiss if I just glossed over this. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. And I'm not going to tell you it's all good. Verse 12. How you have fallen from heaven, morning star. Son of the dawn. You have been cast down to the earth. You, have, you who once <laughs> lay low the nations. You said in your heart, I will ascend to the heavens. I will raise my throne above the stars of God. I will sit enthroned on the mount of assembly, on the utmost heights of Mount Zephon. I will ascend above, above the tops of the clouds. I will make myself like the most high. But you are brought down to the realm of the dead in the depths of of the pit. For extra credit, who are we talking about here? Satan. Satan. Absolutely. Isaiah is giving us snippets all the way through of judgment. Things are coming. And he doesn't leave out the dark. We can't leave that out of the story. When we're talking about, even at Christmas time, maybe even especially at Christmas time, we're talking about, oh, it's a sweet baby born. That's great. And the, uh, you know, warm and comforting. But we can't forget that there is a lion that crouched, pacing back and forth, waiting to devour. And Isaiah tells us that he was thrown out of heaven for trying to ascend above God, and he purposed that in his heart. It's not just the actions, it's the heart. He even was talking about Satan. Yeah, I know it's kind of a downer, at Christmas. But Isaiah, Isaiah said it. He didn't pull the punches. We owe it to our friends, neighbors, and countrymen to let them know that, yeah, we're talking about judgment. If you don't understand Jesus, if you don't have a relationship with Jesus, we can't stop there. If we stop there, 
right? It's kind of like, you know, when I, when I grew up, and Judy had a, a great visit with my mom the other day, all I heard was, and he did what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my mother's justice was pretty swift and immediate. And it was, Greg, you need to stop it. Stop it, Greg. I'm not telling you one more time. If you don't knock it off, if you don't go to school and do what you're supposed to do, you're going to be in so much trouble. Well, that's what we're kind of doing with people when we're just telling them, you go to church? No. Oh, okay. Do you know Jesus Christ? No. Oh, well, we should. Should we tell them why? Should we tell them the, the Andy Rooney, the rest of the story? If you don't know Jesus Christ, you are destined for the same place that Satan is destined to. It talks about Sheol in the, in the Hebrew. That is the pit. And in chapter 21, 20 of Revelation, it says that he is going to be cast into the abyss. We can be happy in oh, Christmas and it's so pretty and twinkly lights and all that. But there are those that are still walking in darkness right in front of the tents. If we're not telling them, I just want to give, thank you, Isaiah, for reminding us just a little tip snippet that if you purpose in your heart, you're going to be fine. You're going to be up here. You can do what you want. It's the warning. It's the warning. So, I don't mean to be the Debbie Downer, but I do need to be telling you the truth. Amen? Let's continue. The way prepared for us. Like I said, this is 2,700 years before today. 700 years before the birth of Christ. So, okay, if, you're, if you're one of those that go, well, you know, Greg, it was only 2,600, 900, 990. Sorry, I didn't count exactly. About 2,700 years. Anything over about six months, and I lost it anyway. <laughs> but let's move on to chapter 40. This is where the real break in the action takes place. This is where God starts bringing out the comfort. From the warnings to the comfort. Chapter 40, starting in verse 3. A voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be raised up, every mountain and hill made low. The rough ground shall become level. The rugged place is plain, and the glory of the Lord will be revealed. And all people will see it together, for the mouth of the Lord is spoken. Yeah, that, that you've read the New Testament, you, you can see the similarity Talk about John the Baptist. This is the first, the first that walked the earth and went, somebody's coming. Somebody that I know, I can't even tie shoes. Somebody's coming. Isaiah gave us that, that message. And it not only shows us that, you know, Isaiah, the coming of the Lord, but if we go to chapter 41, he gives us more comfort and more help. Do not fear, verse 36. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's it. No, 16. My glasses are back there. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right arm. God wanting to comfort you and I. Chapter 42. He's going to... In verse chapter 40, he's going to comfort us. In, in 41, he's going to help us. And in chapter 42, he's going to be our servant. Now don't, in today's English, you read servant, you think, oh, somebody that's going to be, you know, no. He will put himself, as Jesus did, at the bottom to serve you. But he's still your king. For chapter 42. Here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen one whom I delight. I will put my spirit on him, and he will bring justice 
to the nations. New Testament. New Testament. When Jesus came to John the Baptist, he said, I want you to baptize me in the Jordan. I'm paraphrasing here a little bit. John's like, oh, hey, <laughs> you should be, you know, baptize me. And when Jesus came up out of the water, the Spirit of God descended upon him like a dove. And the voice from heaven said, here's my servant, here's my chosen one, depending on which, which translation you're reading, on whom I am well pleased. Whom I am well pleased. So moving on from, from there, in chapter 46, we read something else. <clears throat> and I highly encourage you guys to read all of Isaiah. You're going to get you're going to get a whole lot more than I can give you in, in, in two half-hour sessions. In fact, on Wednesday night, shameless plug for Wednesday night, by the way, we're reading scriptures and the prophecies leading forward. Most of them are Isaiah. Most of them are Isaiah. And if you're here around at uh, Resurrection Sunday, the month before Resurrection Sunday, some people call it Easter, you're going to get a lot of prophecies leading up to the death of Christ. And a lot of them are found where? Isaiah. Isaiah. 46, God, <laughs> chapter 46, I believe we start verse 12. That's just the, the verse number, just a little too small for me. Yep, 12. Listen to me, you stubborn hearted. Sorry, I can't help but giggle when I read that. Listen to me, you stubborn hearted. You who are now far from my righteousness. I am bringing my righteousness near. It is not far away. And my salvation will not be delayed. I will grant salvation to Zion. My splendor to Israel. In this chapter, this section of Isaiah, God is showing us His power. That salvation comes from Him. No one else. Salvation is not possible in anyone else. And found no other name than Jesus Christ. Amen? Mm -hmm. Moving forward here. Isaiah 53, we just talked about it. Isaiah 53, if you want to hear, read a story... And I encourage you to read chapter 53 as a story. Even back up to chapter 52, we're talking about the suffering. You know, in Christmas time, we, we talk about the baby. And we're like, oh. And even, you know, I have pictures of Elijah and Behea's baby. <coughs> if you want to see the little reason. Um, <laughs> but the thought just occurred to me, you know, when Jesus was in the manger... They didn't, they didn't think about the future of that child. Oh, as parents they were, yeah. No, we've got to get him out of this, out of this feed trough. Right? But think about his well-being. But these are also Israelites. I wonder, and this is what these things just make you say, hmm, if they understood Isaiah, and they understood when the angels came to them before the birth, before she got pregnant, and said, you're going to have a baby. I'm a virgin. I don't care. You're going to have a baby. God, and you're going to name him Jesus. Once again, paraphrasing, taking two stories, put them into one here. If they went, huh. Because Mary pondered these things up in her heart. If they went back to Isaiah and read about that and went, could this be? Could that be him? And if so, when they got, when Mary got to chapter 53 of Isaiah, what happened to her heart? This the, the little baby said, I'm gonna talk to, to, to the moms here. Because the dads would be like, yeah, he's gonna have to go have a hard time here. He's gonna have to have some both to be a man. Yeah. <laughs> Might have said that to her in the past. But I want to talk about the moms. Those that God made the heart, the nurturer. If you'd have told my mom when I was born, somebody's going to nail him to a tree. 
She'd have fought you right then. If he, she knew that I was going to be whipped, beaten, and people were going to just esteem me not, what would that have done to her heart? Moms, what would that have done to your heart? So I look, you know, I just think about oh, Mahaya's baby. What's that little dude going to experience in the next however many years, 70, 80, 100 years? And if we knew it in advance, what would we do differently? But we do know something in advance. I'm going completely out of notes now. I'm going to not even finish that. We do know differently. We do understand. We have been given the future. And I pray as not only his pastor and his friend, I told Elijah the other day, I said, well, his church uncle wants, you know. But my wish, my hope, my prayer for that little dude is that he's going to come into understanding of Christ Jesus. And that he will accept him and live a life of obedience and servant and love and caring. Because I already know his future. It's already been told to me. Some of it I just read in Isaiah. The obedience piece of it. If he's going to be obedient, he's going to see a new heaven and a new earth. But if he's not, we just read about Satan being thrown into the abyss. It's hard to look upon that little baby and think that that could happen as an adult. And yes, I believe that as a little baby, God's got me. Jesus said, let the little ones come to me. They belong to me. And at that moment when they figure out what's wrong about spilling really your finger in the cookie jar, then things change. And that, but that's, between, that's up to God. I don't judge. Sorry, we're not talking here for a moment. Let the spirit run with it. But we know the future. We don't know what's going to happen. Like the detail that Mary gets with Isaiah, reading Isaiah. But we do know that that little boy is going to have struggles, skin knees. Yeah, he's probably going to get beat up at some point, I did. Well, we used to do that on the playground. You know, it's kind of pecky over there. You get arrested for that now. Yeah. I digress. I encourage you at the Christmas story to read Isaiah 53. To get the entire perspective of what that baby, what that man is going to endure. You know, I wrote this and it's just... I just have to say thank you, Lord, that you led me on a tirade, and now you've led me back to something I wrote. The future plan of the Lord, the invitation to us all and for us all, that blessed promise. We turn with me to chapter 54. The future glory. The future glory. 55, I'm sorry. Go to chapter 55. God puts things in perspective a little bit and says for in verse 8, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. Greg, how does that tie in to what you're trying to say? Lean not into your own understanding. That's what that means. We can't comprehend all of God's ways. But we can read the amount of His ways that He wants us to know. And when we're talking about the future, that our future is laid out for us, how do we find it? It's right here. It's right here. Well, great, what's going to happen next week? I'm not a prophet. I'm a pastor. And I'm going to tell you, it's going to sun, it's going to rain, it's going to be wind. 
You're going to hunger and you're going, you're going to be full. And then through this entire thing, Satan's going to be attacking you. But God's going to love you through it if you let him. He's giving you a pathway to salvation. Are you going to follow it? Are you going to follow it? And as Isaiah, you are going to be called to lead. You're going to be called to speak up. In Isaiah, I think it was chapter 6, God says, who are we going to send? And Isaiah says, here I am, send me. Is that going to be you? Is that going to be you? <clears throat> chapter 65, we get the ultimate promise. Chapter 65 of Isaiah. Starting in I'm going to say 27. No, 17. Really should have brought the glasses. Out. <laughs> See, I will create new heavens and a new earth. The former things will not be remembered, nor will they come to mind. But be glad and rejoice forever in what I will create. For I will create Jerusalem to be a delight and its people a joy. I will rejoice over Jerusalem and make delight and take delight in my people. The sound of weeping and crying will be heard no more. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. Chapter 21 of Revelation. The rest of the story. For I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no more any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look, God's dwelling place is now among the people, and he will dwell with them. Come on up, music team. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain. For the old order of things has passed away. The old order of things has passed away. We're talking about today. God's going to make it new. So when you read Isaiah... He's prophesying about how it's going to go. He's not talking about, he is talking about Israel. But that's not it. That's not all. He's talking about us. He's talking about us today. He's talking about the future of the world. From ancient to present to future. All in the book of Isaiah. So I encourage you to read Isaiah. And don't stop there. Then go to Jeremiah. Mm -hmm. Folks, you have a choice. You have a choice. There's only two. Only two. So over the next few weeks, I get a break. Brody's preaching next week. Brad's preaching on Christmas Day. And they both have communion. I'll be, I'll, I'll be giving the message on Christmas Eve. I just got to say, you know, that's, that's just God. He knows. <laughs> Greg, why don't you back up? I've got these other dudes. Great. Thank you. Trust in God. Trust Him. He's got you. Amen? Amen. Yeah, let's pray. Father, thank you so much. I want to thank you first for Isaiah. All the men and women in, in, in your Bible that have been examples, have been heralds, been martyrs, and all of them, Father, your servants. I know, Father, that it's been said that the New Testament is still truly going until Revelation comes to fruition we're still in the New Testament. I pray, Father, that we are worthy of those that have gone on before us. 
I pray, Father, that we are worthy of your Son, Jesus Christ. Let us have the strength, the comfort to speak his name freely and unashamed. Thank you so much. It's in Jesus' powerful, precious, glorious name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.